So, you hear a scuffle outside, some high-pitched crying sounds, and as you run towards the commotion, you find one of your poor doggos looking like the Cyclops, Mike Wazowski. How did this happen? And what can you do about it? Your doggo is suffering from proptosis. Watch this video to find out exactly what that means and what you can do to help him. Hey guys, Dr. Beecher. I'm a veterinarian from South Africa. Now the word proptosis basically means the forward displacement of the eyeball, known as the globe, out of the eye socket, known as the orbit, with the eyelid trapped behind the globe. This is a very common ocular emergency and one that requires immediate veterinary attention. Now, contrary to popular belief, this condition does not simply occur just by giving your dog a big fright. Trauma is the most common cause of proptosis and in small breed dogs, this often occurs during a fight with a larger dog where the larger dog bites over the scruff of the neck and starts shaking the smaller dog around. This pulls the skin back over the smaller dog's head, which eventually forces the eyes to pop forward out of the socket. Bites directly to the face could also result in proptosis, but this is not as common. Other causes may include blunt trauma to the face or the head, often seen when hit by a car, excessive manual restraint of brachycephalic breeds around the neck by means of scruffing, and space occupying lesions behind the eye globe, such as tumors or abscesses behind the eyeball, which applies pressure and pushes the eye globe forward. Proptosis is more commonly seen in brachycephalic breeds, such as Pekinesis, Pugs, Boston Terriers, and Shih Tzus, as they all have prominent bulging eyes, short noses, and shallow eye sockets, which makes them much more prone for the eyes to slip out. So the obvious clinical sign that you'll see will be an enlarged prominent eyeball being trapped in front of the eyelids with the eyelids rolling inwards. This prevents the eyeball from returning to its normal position, thereby cutting off the blood drainage from the eye, which will soon lead to swelling and inflammation of the tissues and surrounding muscles of the eyes, ultimately preventing the dog's ability to blink. Other signs may include bleeding inside the eye or an abnormally large or small pupil. And in severe cases, you may also notice a ruptured eye globe as well as ruptured muscles around the globe with the eye deviating outwards to either side. These muscles are responsible for keeping the globe in place. So when they rupture, the globe will loosen up and deviate towards the looser end. Now, as with any vet visit, your vet will need to get a thorough history and perform a proper clinical exam to look for signs of any other injuries or possible complications. This is especially important in traumatic accidents as many times there are more severe underlying damage than meets the eye. See what I did there? <laughs> your vet may opt to take x-rays of the head, chest and abdomen to make sure that the diaphragm and bladder is intact and that none of the cervical vertebra has been luxated or that any of the facial bones have been fractured. An abdominal ultrasound is also useful to look for any free fluid in the abdomen as if the bladder ruptured, for example, this can lead to sterile peritonitis, which is a severely painful inflammation of the abdominal wall and which will lead to a very poor prognosis. Your vet may also decide to run some blood tests to make sure that nothing else is wrong and to ensure that the dog is stable enough for anesthesia. Once your vet is happy that no other injuries can be found, he will then proceed to examine both eyes in order to assess the extent of the injury. He will first perform a fluorescein stain test to determine if there are any scratches or cuts on the surface of the cornea, and then use an ophthalmoscope to examine the function of the muscles, skin, and optic nerve attached to the eyeball. One of the vital things that your vet will test for is called the papillary light reflex, where a light will be shown directly over the pupil in a dark room. If the eye functions normally, the pupil should constrict, meaning get smaller when light is shown on the eyeball and dilate again when the light is removed. If there is no papillary light reflex, then the prognosis for vision in the eye is really poor as it means that the optic nerve which is the nerve connecting the brain to the eye, 
has most probably torn off, causing irreversible damage to the function of the eye. Other negative prognostic indicators include a ruptured globe, when three or more of the eye's muscles have ruptured, and if there is a fracture of the bone around the eye. So Dr. Pete, what do I need to do when I stumble across my dog with its proptized eyeball? Well, first off, you need to keep the proptized eyeball moist. You can use lubrication human eye drops, sterile water or KY jelly, which you can gently apply to the eyeball. Try not to use tap water as tap water may contain chemicals and microorganisms which can be detrimental to the health of the eye. If you have an Elizabethan collar, then put it over your dog's head. A prop toast eye is very painful and your dog may try to rub or scratch the eyeball against the carpet or furniture and an e-collar will therefore help to limit further trauma to the prop toast eye. Do not give your pet any human pain medication or anti-inflammatories, please. Especially ibuprofen, diclofenac or aspirin. This will most likely cause more damage than good and may send your dog into kidney failure or cause stomach ulcers when overdosed. Also, please do not attempt to treat the eye yourself by trying to push the prop toast eyeball back into its socket. This must be done by a professional under general anesthesia so as not to cause damage to the eyelid's interior and because it will just be extremely painful to your poor doggo. And lastly, take your dog to the vet as soon as possible. This condition is not something that can be fixed at home and as mentioned earlier, it will warrant immediate veterinary attention. Now, even before any surgery can be attempted, it is important that the patient is stable. If the dog is suffering from shock from a traumatic accident, he will first need to be hospitalized, put on a drip and receive intravenous fluids and given pain medication to stabilize him. Now, based on the severity of the injury, there's generally two types of treatment options which exist. The eyeball globe is either replaced back into the socket or the prop toast eyeball is completely removed surgically. If the eyeball still had enough function in it, the muscles keeping it in place hasn't torn too severely and the dog was brought in soon after the incident, then the eye may be saved and replaced by means of a procedure known as a temporary tarsorothy with lateral canthotomy. The way in which we do this is we place the dog under general anesthesia, surgically prep the eye by shaving the hair around the eyeball, cleaning it with chlorhexidine and applying iodine solution around the eyelids. We then make a very small incision on the outer edge of the eyelid to allow more space in the orbit, lubricate the eyeball and then push it gently back into place. The eyelids are then sutured closed, leaving only a small opening in the middle of the eye. The sutures will need to stay in place for about two to three weeks, after which it will need to be removed and the function of the eye retested to determine if the vision in the eye was affected or not. Your vet may also perform a fluorescein stain test again to look for ulcers, as well as a shimmer tear test to see if the eye can still adequately produce enough tears. If not, your dog will most probably have keratoconjunctivitis sicca, also known as dry eye, which is a very serious and painful condition. If there were any ulcers detected on the replaced eyeball, your vet may prescribe antibiotics as well as atropine eye drops to be applied to the eyeball for a couple of days to treat the infection and to prevent ciliary spasms of the small muscles within the eye. If the dog has dry eye, he will need to receive tacrolimus eye drops for the rest of his life. It is also common for dogs whose eyeball has been replaced to have strabismus, which basically means the one eye will turn in a direction that is different from the other eye due to the fact that the shortest muscle, which sits on the inside of the orbit, often tears first when the eyeball is displaced. This will result in your dog having a cross-eyed appearance, which does look a bit funny and not very appealing, but it is not necessarily painful to them. Now, if the damage is too severe, the vision is completely lost and the eye muscles are torn beyond repair, the more merciful thing to do is to remove the eyeball from the eye socket completely, which we call an enucleation. 
This is a salvage procedure to remove the constant severe pain the dog is experiencing. Your vet will remove the globe, associated blood vessels and nerves completely and permanently suture the eyelids closed. I know that some of you may think that this is cruel as the thought of imagining your beloved pet with only one eye is very distressing and traumatic. But most often these patients recover really quickly and do lead normal happy lives. Even dogs that go completely blind in both eyes have a remarkable ability to adapt to the environment using the other senses. So in these cases it is much kinder to take away the throbbing pain of an injured eye by removing it completely. In both these treatment cases the dog will be sent home with proper systemic pain medication such as an anti-inflammatory like carprofen or an analgesic like tramadol and an Elizabethan collar to prevent further damage and injury to the surgical site. If the eyeball popped or there were any signs of infection then your vet may also prescribe systemic antibiotics as well. Now the prognosis for vision in the affected eye is always poor and will depend on the extent of the trauma and how soon the treatment was started. But even if the vision is lost completely, rapid response could in the very least help to save the eye for cosmetic reasons. There is a prophylactic surgery available that can prevent the occurrence of proptosis in predisposed brachycephalic breeds known as medial canthoplasty or permanent lateral tarsorathy. And this procedure basically entails the palpable fissures, meaning the gap between the upper and lower eyelids, are surgically shortened to reduce the space around the eyeball. So, as you can see, proptosis is a serious emergency and warrants a visit to your veterinarian immediately. The best chance of salvaging the eye and preserving vision is to perform surgery to reposition the globe as quickly as possible. Even one hour could mean the difference between saving and losing the eye. So if this ever happens to your poor doggo, then make sure you don't waste precious time and take him to the vet as soon as possible. Thank you for watching guys. If you found this video to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you can leave a like and share this video with your friends and your family. That really helps to promote this video to more people and it does help my channel out a lot. And if you are new to my channel, then welcome and consider subscribing as I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. Anyways guys, that is all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers.